If you hang out on the forums, chances are you've probably been diagnosed with an astigmatism by somebody else on the forum. Now, do you actually have one? Or do you not? Well, that that remains to be seen exactly. There is some misunderstandings about there out there about astigmatisms. Uh, the phrase often comes up in discussions about red dots. When people say that they got a red dot, oftentimes maybe it's their first or they've gotten a new type of red dot, something that they're unfamiliar with, they turn it on and they notice that it's not that crisp, nice, fine dot that they expected. There's a little starburst going on. There's a little weird shapeage going on. Uh, the big one you hear about is starburst. Now, a cluster uh, of grapes, a cluster of grapes, etc. This conversation came up in our prism scopes versus red dot Afterwards, we, we got done talking about that in this 10-minute talk, so we decided why not do another one on the astigmatism specifically. Ruben, explain what you know about astigmatism, what they actually are, and uh, some of the misconceptions out there. Well, what, what I know about it just from talking to some of our engineers here at Vortex is that an astigmatism is actually a condition of the human eye that is going to involve the shape of the eye. And now when light comes into the eye, you, you know it's going to reflect, uh, and that's going to produce your image. Now, when the eye is what's been described to me as egg-shaped rather than perfectly round, uh, an oval eye is going to give some of those, uh, you're going to see reflections that you might not normally see. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, it's ultimately a distorted image of reality, right? And usually that involves right. light. Right, yeah, and, and like you said, everybody's eye, you have a lens on the outside of your eye, and in fact, that's kind of one thing we talked about with Sam, your eye is the last part of the optical system in any optic that a lot yep. of people oftentimes phase out, and that's, that's focusing an image down onto your retina at the back of your eye, and that retina is, is essentially communicating with your brain about what image it's receiving from that lens, and if your lens, to Ruben's point, isn't perfect, it's going to be giving off some little different reflections, maybe a few, you know, when you see that cluster of grapes and you see weird shapes out of your red dot or something like that, that could be that deformation causing a little bit of skew focusing down onto your retina and your retina is just telling your brain what it's getting. Yeah, and if that lens is not giving it the proper information in regards to light and colors and stuff like that, then what you're seeing is not actually reality. So we've seen right. that, which is why we can take that... Uh, a camera and we take a picture of a red dot and we see this perfectly round uh, shaped dot. That's what I was going to ask. If a person is experiencing, you know, this distortion of the dot, you know, what is a good test for them to be able to tell? Is it me? Is it you? Yep. You being yeah. the dot and Ruben, exactly to your point with the camera there. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times I think what we see is like, uh, oh, I have an astigmatism. I'm seeing a distorted image. A lot of times we're dealing with uh, maybe you just have the brightness turned up too high, something like that. Maybe there's a ton of reflections in uh, the, br the background. I see it a lot with like uh, background light when you're shooting yeah. you know, that sun coming back from behind. You might think you have an astigmatism, whereas you just have uh, a smudge of uh, oil or dirt on the lens and you're seeing that light come back in and it's distorting the dot. The number mm -hmm. one thing I always tell people is clean your lenses. That's one of the, the biggest things you can do to avoid misdiagnosis, right? Clean sure. your lenses. Yeah, I've found in the past where I thought to myself, man, I think I have an astigmatism. Turn the brightness down a little bit? Nope. It's just the fact that the ambient light is a huge factor in how your dot will look. If you're indoors, a lot of times people think, oh, man, I'm indoors. I think it's just a natural thing for human beings to just want more, right? Horsepower, meat. Um, bacon. Bacon, which is also meat, but I, it's those, separate in way. Those last two really don't actually track with me, right? You do we need always more of those. Want, okay, we always want more. So that's what we think, more illumination. Turn that up button, crank it up as high as you can get it. Performance. Right, but the ambient light is going to play a great factor in that. Usually that top, top illumination is only for, like, direct sunlight. Like, I'm talking, like, Death Valley, sun at noon. I don't know if it's, I assume it's really bright there because it gets really hot. Um that's where you want that. When you're indoors, you can actually turn that down quite a bit. It's going to make your dot look so much better because you're not going to have all this flaring going on. And uh, sometimes that will, quote, cure your astigmatism. And if so, we're looking at red dots versus like a holographic type site, not to interrupt Mark, but a red dot versus a holographic type site, we're actually looking at that dot inside the optic. If we're talking about like a Spark AR, that dot is physically however many inches away from your eye that we have it mounted, your eye is focusing on that. And if that distance is eight inches, now the target in the background looks blurry. And True. so if we have that dot cranked up so high, it's causing our eye to not be able to focus on the target at all, which is going to give us poor accuracy. Maybe your transitions are a little faster because you're picking up the sight faster, but ultimately we're not able to focus on that target where we want to put that shot. Whereas like with the holographic, that dot or that image is actually focused at 50 meters and we can actually focus downrange on the target a little bit. But even so, if you have that illumination too high, you're going to see some distorted image. Right, right. 
So if a person truly does have an astigmatism, and yeah. that dot is, which many you know, people do, which you know, many people do. I guess one thing that I'd say, because I, you know, do so much shooting with my airs, is uh, number one, it doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect round dot to be usable. True, correct. Uh, and then I guess there are some other options out there that maybe can mitigate that problem. Maybe speak to that a little bit, Ruben. Yeah, we can look at uh, if we do truly have an astigmatism and we have a problem seeing that reflected light, uh, because a lot of times we do see reflections as one of the main uh, uh, causations to having that astigmatism flare up. We could go to like a prism site. We could go to, uh, but you know, and and this is if we need illumination, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah, if we need uh, uh, like one to six, uh, one to fours, one to eights, right? We can go to those sites if we do need that illumination. Otherwise, you know, like that Spitfire AR, um, you can use it without illumination, too. You can. Yeah. And you're still maintaining that ultra compactness, you know, mm-hmm. that, that you're getting yeah. with the red dot. I mean, those those, um, those Spark AR. sites are uh, incredibly, incredibly compact optical systems. Yes, they are. Yeah, Spark AR and Spitfire AR in front of us here, they're nearly the same size. Um, you know, one interesting thing that I've heard a couple of people say, and I, these are people that I've heard, you know, uh, that are trainers down at our range, a couple other folks that I've talked to around here. Um, it, it doesn't always come across super well. Cause I know everybody, when they get a red dot, you just, if look, if every red dot to every person just looked like a perfect dot, then we wouldn't have any issues and it'd be great. But to some people, you know, who do have, you know, an astigmatism, I've heard toenail shape, um, which is kind of a weird thing to think of, or comma. Like, a half, comma. Kind of like a comma. Yeah. Um, that is for you, it will be consistent. So every single time that you see that, as long as it's not like somehow completely ruining the image that you're seeing, and again, check that brightness too, that's a consistent point of aim. It's not going to change for you. So you can still use like yes. a comma shape or something that's a little bit askew from a regular dot. You can still use it. And then one other thing. Consistently. I, yeah, absolutely. And one other thing I want to say too is because we've determined ultimately that the human eye is what's causing this to happen, you know, take a picture of the dot, it looks good. Since we're determining that the issue kind of goes back to difference uh, differences in people's eyes, you can get astigmatism astigmatism correcting lenses yep. in in glasses. You can get uh, they're called they're like a weighted contact, so it's heavier or thicker on one end. So that's an astigmatism correcting contact. Uh, and a lot of times when people go and have uh, like LASIK eye surgery, they do find that their astigmatism may be less uh, than it, intense than it was before. That's what I found. My yep. my just vision of a, a red dot looks better after LASIK, even though it wasn't terrible to begin with. I think it just got crisped up a little bit. Yep. Another thing that I've heard many people say, and this is this has come from engineers and optical engineers and things like that, is that it differs with the red dot. Mm-hmm. So some people, their natural shape of their eye or whatever it, whatever it is, it mates up really well with one particular red dot, but they might see a different red dot a little bit differently. Have you seen that, Ruben? Yeah, so a lot of times I'll hear in competition, you know, guys will say, oh, I like the razor red dot for this because I see a finer dot. Or they'll say, mm-hmm. oh, maybe I should go with this dot on this gun because I'm looking for a more precise aiming point or something like that. Uh, I do believe from what, you know, what I've heard, uh, probably some from the, some of the same folks that you have, Jim, is that uh, we, we're taking that LED and we're creating uh, a cutout of the shape of the image that we want to make. And then we're that's like a filter, right? And then that we're seeing a reflection of that light that's coming through that filter. So I think it depends some on the type of anti-reflective coatings in the optical system. It depends, too, on some uh, some of the coatings that we're using to enhance or uh, slow down light transmission. Of mm-hmm. Right when we have, uh, a lot of times you'll see like a reddish tint on there. Um, uh, some of them you see a bluish tint. It's because of the type of emitter we're using, t- because of the type of uh, optical system that it is, if it's closed, if it's open. Uh, so, yeah, we do see that some dots for some people are just, they're going to see that one better. And then you could you could also see where you pick up two Spark ARs, and the guy says this one's way better than that one. Yeah, it's weird how that works. It's yet another reason why going and seeing things in person is always the ideal situation. Of course, it's difficult in this day and age, yeah. this online age. But uh, I, br- I truly find that one. T- you know, if everyone were in the market for a one power optic and if everyone went to Vortex or a Vortex dealer and picked up a Spark AR and a Spitfire AR, most of them would probably walk out with a Spitfire AR because they see that dot more clearly. Great point. Very interesting. But there are different price points and stuff like that. So. Very intuitive. With 15 seconds left here, I will say, dude, I don't know what it is about that Razor Red Dot. That freaking thing is crisp. The dot and is I hear very it crisp. So much from so many different people. I think a lot of it has to do with the type of coatings on that parabolic objective. Yeah. And there you have it. 
10 minutes. Great topic. Astigmatisms. Tell us what you want to know. If you want to know anything else, if you have any questions. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye.